Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and in this video I'm going to be looking at aspects of soft proofing using test images and also a quick look at three different but very similar cotton rag papers that I'm currently testing on this ET8500. Now, um, I've tested quite a few papers on this, and one of the reasons I was curious about this, these are from uh, Paper Spectrum, a local supplier here in, in Leicester in the UK. And nominally, the papers are very similar. They are all 310 gram, and they're all cotton rag. But are they different? Can I use soft proofing at all? And what difference does this make to when I'm actually printing and when I'm editing images to print? Are the limitations of soft proofing? Well, I've, I've produced quite a few uh, videos where I mention aspects of soft proofing. And somebody this morning asked me a bit more about it. So I thought I'd just put this together to give a bit more of an idea of how and when I use soft proofing. Because um, it is useful, despite my skepticism. Um, I generally maintain that it's much overused by people. The real thing is it's overused by people without understanding why you're doing it and what benefits you get from it and what the limitations of it are. Um, in a way, as you get more experienced in printing, you should, use, should need to use soft proofing less and less until it becomes an exception rather than the rule. If you find yourself using soft proofing for every single print you're doing, I'm gonna say you're doing it wrong or at least there are probably better ways of doing it. Now, I go into various aspects of what this is. So the basics of soft proofing. It is that when you print an image from editing, that you have a paper profile, which is specific to the printer and the paper type and the, the actual paper. So that profile is in its way a form of translation documents between the colors that you've got in your computer in the image, which of course are not quite the same as are being displayed on the screen, but that's another matter altogether. Um, the profile is what does the translation or aids the translation between those colors of your image and what the printer can manage. Now you produce profiles and I've got quite a few things about profiling by printing test sheets like this. These test sheets have lots of colors on them. I have equipment that measures the colors. The software knows what the colors should be. It knows what they've been measured. So it produces a profile which corrects between the two when you print. Now they're not perfect. Um, they are, have limitations. Uh, some, some printers and papers take profiles better than others. Some are quite tricky to profile, but in general, you have a profile for a specific paper. The profile is used at a specific media setting. So for all of these prints here, I have used the VFA Velvet Fine Art setting on this C8500. Goes exactly the same for the 8550, by the way, because it's identical printers, the 8550 is just a bit bigger. So I've used this profile for printing. I've specified the media type VFA. Now, the media type does not necessarily match the paper. The media type is what was used when the profile was created. You need to, to effectively use a profile, you need to recreate those conditions. So I've got lots of different papers. They all use the VFA setting, mainly because VFA is the only setting on this printer in the 8550, which uses the matte black pigment ink as well as the dyes. Now, that gives particularly good performance on these sort of papers from this printer. Um, and when I tested the 8550, it was one of the things I really noticed, how paper choice and profiling was really important in getting the best results. Now, I've got three papers here. One of them is called Cotton Rag Bright White. And as you'll guess, it's a brighter white paper. Although looking here in this lighting here, I can't immediately tell. I've got the three profiling charts here in front of me. I can't immediately tell which is the brightest white of the papers. I can't tell between weight either. They're all 310 gram. They're all very similar. If you look carefully, you'll find they have slightly different surface textures. And if you can't tell the difference, you look on the back of them, the surface texture is different once again between them. They are that similar. Well, you think, well, why are you bothering with three identical papers? That is because they are not identical. When 
um, you profile. The results of the profiling is based on the paper, the printer, but it's the coating of the paper which is the most important and what goes into making up the paper. So we've got bright white cotton rag, bright white 310. We've got cotton rag 310 and then etching 310. Now, when I do the profiling and create this, I get all kinds of graphs and details and numbers out of it. And they give me some information about what's going on in the paper when the inks are on it. And what I noticed was that the bright white is indeed, it has optical brightness in it. It is not brilliantly bright. It's not like copier paper or something like that, that if I get my UV laser pointer and point at it, copier paper just lights up with this. Um, it's quite bright. The cotton rag is very similar. It's bright, so there is a difference. There are some brightening agents in it, but not necessarily optical brightness. There are different types of brightening agents. So it still gives a good glow when I point the uh, UV laser pointer at it, but it doesn't give quite such an intense glow as the bright white and hence the name between the papers, bright white. And so there's a, there's a subtle difference there. And if you go into certain into daylight, you can see more of a difference. The etching has, as far as I can see in looking at the spectral results of testing this, has no optical brightness in it at all. So for archival purposes, if you were worried about that, you might go to pick the etching over the bright white. Now, depending on the image and when you're going to use it, um, these optical brightness, and I've done stuff on optical brightness, these optical brightness may not be that much of a problem. Um, if the picture looks great on that, then so what? There are optical brightness in some of these prints on the wall here and, and others. Am I worried about that? No, not really. Um, then just nice papers. Now, some of them are fairly bright without much OBA in it. I've, I've looked at lots of different papers over the years, but I'm not that worried by it. But if you're concerned over optical brightness, then you'd pick the etching. I'd note too that although each of them is 310 grams in weight, they are slightly different thicknesses. That's because weight just gives you the grams per unit area. It doesn't depend on the thickness. You can have a relatively light, thick paper or a dense paper and they can have the same grams, but they can be different thicknesses. So if the thickness is important for anything ever, do check the thickness as well as the weight. The two are not the same thing. Uh, they, can, they are similar, they are broad indicators, but they are not actually similar. So there we go, we've got three papers. On the surface of it, they all look fairly, fairly similar. In daylight, I can tell a slight difference. Here, if I look carefully, can I tell? Well, yes. Um, this is the etching, and I did have to look at what I'd written on it to double check. And compared with the bright white, it is indeed a slightly whiter white than this one. So that may make a slight difference. OK, what about the soft proofing I was mentioning? Well, if you're normally editing, you're editing your picture, you would then soft proof it and have a look at a soft proof to see how the print is going to come out. Well, that gives you an indication. When you print, and this is a standard test image I use, it's available for download on the North Light Images website. And um, here is the same test image printed on three different papers, on the three different papers. Now, I've written on the back of them, which it is, which is, if you're doing testing, do pen, write in pencil on the back of things because you will forget. And if I look at these, at first glance, there is virtually no difference. Um, if I look very carefully, I can see that the colours are more intense on the bright white. Um, I asked Karen to have a look at these as well, because she's got uh, more discerning colour vision than I have. And she said the colours on the bright one looked a little bit cheap, a little bit perhaps scary, a bit bright. So the colours are coming out well, but it depends what you actually want. But on a test image, you shouldn't really be seeing that. You're just looking to see how the performance of the colours. Now, there's also a difference in black and white uh, between them. Um, I've not tested the black and white print mode of this, but certainly for this, there is a subtle difference in that the paper here, and that is the etching, has a slightly, in this light, a slightly perhaps ever so slight greenish tinge. The 
cotton rag looks fairly neutral and the bright white looks perhaps a tiny little bit magenta. Now, there is no way you can tell from soft proofing that the differences you're going to get in these. The only way you can do this is to get some paper is to, and this is one of the reasons I print these, uh, these particular test sheets, is to get a test sheet to get a feel for how the print's going to look. So there it is on the screen, there's the test image, and there is the print. Now what, three prints beyond the different papers. Um, if I get the UV pointer out, I can see that, yeah, that's the bright one, it's quite bright, and that one is less so. If I wave the line across them, then maybe it will be visible even on the video. But it's certainly obvious here that this one doesn't have the brightness in. The other two have some brightness in, uh, but varying amounts. So I've got prints there. But how does soft proofing help me here? Well, not a lot, other than to say, when I soft proof this image here, and I've got three different screenshots of soft proofing with each profile because you soft proof against the profile and there is no difference I can discern between them yet the prints are subtly different how would I decide which one I like well it's, it's your own taste it depends what you're printing and where you're going to print if I was printing black and white I might choose different result to printing color so there we got that there's that. The soft proof doesn't tell me much. It tells me that from a profiling point of view, they're very similar. Um, out of gamma areas, very small on most of them. Some of these very bright reds here are slightly out of gamut on this, but the pictures look great. So how is soft proofing helping me? It's, it's not. Um, this is one of those bits where I know what this looks like on my screen. This is a, you never edit or adjust the test images when you print them. You take the test image as is, you print it. So it comes out like that. Let's say I want to do a print, that image there, some little, tiny flowers on a jade plant. Let's say I want to do a print of that and I'm unsure and I'm editing it. Now this is a bit where people typically might consider using soft proofing. I'm looking at that and thinking, well, that looks good. Well, let's put it against, let's also have, as well as that, let's have the test print. Now, I can look at the test print on my screen. I can look at the test print here on paper and get a feel for how they're going to vary. This comes through experience. Now. I could use soft proofing on this to see if any colors are out of gamut. But with something like this with soft pastel colors, like nothing here is going to be out of gamut. There's not going to be any problems. There's not going to be any colors that you can't print. Um, so I'm looking here because remember when I did the soft proofing here, I could see no difference between the choice of the three papers. So I'm looking at that. The tonality of this looks okay compared to the tonality of this and it's always about um, the tricky bit with editing is when you reach that finish point have, have you got it for black and white have you got the overall brightness okay colors have you got the color intensity right um, so i've by having this test image on the screen for me to go back to as a reference I can go, well, there we go. I know the colors are gonna come out a little bit fainter on this. They're gonna lose a little bit of intensity. Um, always do in printing. Sometimes you might need to bump up the color just a little bit. So it looks slightly overdone on the screen, but when it comes out on the print, it looks okay. Remember, if you're producing prints, the prints are what you are producing. You are not producing screen images. If you are producing screen images for show or web or something like that, that is a completely different thing. If you're doing it for print, the print is what counts. Doesn't matter what it looks like on here. It's about the print. So anyway, there is that. And let's say I'm going to print that. And there is, uh, here is one I created earlier. Now, I had to look carefully to see exactly which paper this was. And... In fact, I'm looking on the back to get a feel for you know, as to what it is because the texture of the back is slightly different as well. And this is indeed the bright white. 
Why the bright white? Well, if anything, bright white does have a slight tinge towards the magenta in some lights. It, the colours are more intense, but I want to duplicate these fine violets and greens in the print. Now, this being on video, I'm not entirely certain how well it will actually show. Let's pop that out of the way so we can see. But there is a print. There is the image. Now, I've not needed to use soft proofing at all for this. One of the reasons I try and suggest people move away from soft proofing is that the soft proofing is a great thing for a step by step guide. Um, that's why people, when they're teaching stuff, they love including soft proofing because it's a definite process you could give people. Now, some people, and it varies as to how you approach your editing, are recipe followers by nature. They like to have an A goes to B goes to C goes to C set of steps which will lead you to a print. Now, I personally cannot work that way um, because I have to understand what I'm doing in the process and I have to know where I'm going to. It is not just a matter of dialing in the numbers and doing it. Soft proofing is a bit of a crutch in that aspect because it's telling you something that you need knowledge to interpret, but it's giving the excuse to blame the soft proofing if it doesn't look quite right when you choose it. Now, one of the things is I was you know, that reminded me of this the other day. Um, I was uh, had a had a joint of meat to to cook, and it was something I wasn't familiar with. So I went online, looked at a few recipes just to get some inspiration for the best ways to cook it. And I noticed in the reviews for the recipes several times this happened where somebody has gives it one star and says, this is awful, I wasted all my ingredients because I followed this recipe exactly and it was awful, it wasn't cooked properly. I, you know. And I, I looked, read through the recipe again and at one point it said reduce the temperature from, you know, to 100, to 90 degrees. I thought, 90? You're not going to be cooking, unless you're cooking for days, you're not going to be cooking meat at 90 degrees. It must be a typo. It must be 190. So, yeah, sure enough, had a great meal. No problem at all. And there it is. Because somebody followed that exactly without thinking, does this make sense? They just went, did it, and got food that was no good. Now, they it does have, and cook for two and a half hours, until it's or you know until the meat looks done well they obviously didn't read that bit either uh, but you know they followed it exactly and the problem is that if you try and follow these things exactly so you try and use the soft proofing and stuff like this as a step-by-step -step guide you never actually understand the process what is going on and I say that if you want to make prints that are better than your average snaps and you want to put the effort into making prints, then you have to make effort to gain the experience. And the best way I su can suggest to people is when you have new paper, you print out a test image. You keep that test image for that paper so that you know what the characteristics of images printed because don't make the mistake of assuming that profiling is make is about making everything look the same it is not profiling is about getting the best results out of that particular paper now these three particular papers are superficially very similar i'm i'm not sure which ones i'd use I would um, certainly on this printer, on another printer, I'd perhaps make a different choice. And that's the other thing. If somebody to you comes up to you and says, ah, I know those three papers, the etching 310 is the best. It gives the best results. Do ask what printer they're using, because it varies from every single printer that you might try. Um, the inks are different. The printer uh, printers work differently. But by taking time to actually understand what this looks like, Looking at it in different lighting, lighting here is matched to this screen. It's about 4000 K. Um, look at the different printing. Look at it in different lights. Look at it in the light where you're going to show it if you're going to put it on the wall. If when you take this print and you put it on the wall where you're thinking of putting your print 
and it looks too dark. Well, that's probably because the room's not very bright. How could you correct it? You need to make the print brighter. You need to allow for things like that. So it all comes about an appreciation of where you're trying to get to. If you know where you're trying to get to, it's much easier to get directions. And that goes for printing as well as finding your way around everywhere else. So a very nice looking print of these little flowers. Um, if I printed it on one of these other ones, I could notice the difference because I'm holding the paper here. But how many people actually take, you know, feel the paper? Which one would I use? I don't know really. Um, it really is a matter of choice for that. And for these papers, the similarities are that close that they show up the weaknesses of soft proofing and other systems like that. It's all about printing, it's about building confidence and trusting your own judgment. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Please do ask questions because it was somebody's question this morning that gave me the idea for just doing this, this little short video. And um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do subscribe to the channel. It is appreciated. And thanks for watching.